I hate my life. Do you hate your life? What exactly did Jesus mean when he talked about hating our own life? Check out this video. Praise God and greetings to all of you disciples out there in the digital world. Welcome back to Digital Disciple Ministries. You're tuning in to Discipleship Daily. It's a daily devotional that's designed to help you keep your mind, heart, soul, and your entire being engaged with God. And I started a video series as it turns out to be, that I'm going to title, It'll Cost You. Because the truth of the matter is that discipleship has a price. Following Jesus is free. Following Jesus is fine. But if you want to become a disciple of the Lord, well, that's going to cost you. And in this video series, we're going to talk about how it's going to cost you. I have as a base scripture, Luke chapter 14, verses 25 through 33. It is a lengthy reading, and I'm going to read it to you again. Why? Because repetition, repetition helps us to remember. Repetition is what drives that word into our heart. Have you ever tried to set up a tent, one of them big tents, and you had to put a stake into the ground and you had to repeatedly hit that stake to drive it in deeper and further into the ground? Well, that's exactly what we're doing with the word of God. The word is a sword and we want to drive that thing deep into the center of our being. We want to hide the word there and repetition is what's going to do it. So, I'm going to read this again. And as is custom for me to do, I'm going to read these verses to you in the King James. Excitement. <laughs> that was corny, wasn't it? Praise God. Anyways, so we're going to read Luke chapter 14, verses 25 through 33. You can follow along with whatever version you have or whatever version you're comfortable with. This is what the Bible says, Jesus speaking and instructing his disciples. And there went great multitudes with him. And he turned and said unto them, be careful, man, just because people are with you or following after you, it doesn't really mean that they're with you. Because here, when Jesus was doing these miracles and performing these powerful works and acts of wonder, there were multitudes. But then at the Last Supper, there were 12. And in the Garden of Gethsemane, in Christ's agony and suffering, there were only three that went further with him. And then at the cross, there was only one disciple. So, the closer you get to the cross, the closer you get to your suffering with God, don't expect the crowd to be there. And if there is a crowd, then they might not be cheering you on. There was a crowd at the cross, but many of the people that were there were mocking him and scoffing and reviling him. So don't be surprised if in the limelight of your ministry, in the limelight of your life, in the limelight of your season, you've got a crowd, you've got a multitude. But then when the lights go out, where are all the people? Welcome to discipleship. Verse 26, if any man come to me and hate not his father and mother, and wife, and children, and brethren, and sisters, yeah, and his own life. He cannot be my disciple. Harsh words, 
hard words to swallow, hard words to understand. What does he mean? I got to hate my mother. What does he mean? I got to hate my father. I got, do I have to have ill will towards them? Do I have to feel some type of bitterness or resentment to them? What does it, what does Jesus mean? Hate. Well, when you look up the word hate, one of the definitions that seems to most closely fit the context here is the definition to love less. To hate here means to love less. And when we're talking about discipleship, when we're talking about following Jesus, we're supposed to love our own life less then we love God. We're supposed to love our mother less than God. We're supposed to love our father less than God, your wife, your husband, your children, your brothers, your sisters. We're supposed to love people less than we love God. Now, don't get it twisted. I'm not saying go out here and throw shade and hate on people and stuff. That's not what I mean. What I am saying is, don't allow the relationships that you're in to take God's place or to come before God. This is what it means to hate these people. The scripture continues, And whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. To bear means literally or figuratively to endure. So we have to endure this thing. We have to sustain this cross. Another word to define bear means to declare. How many of you have declared your cross? Did you know that the cross was a public thing? You can't suffer privately. That's not a real cross. The cross was a public thing. What I'm saying is that no, I'm not saying that if you're suffering privately and nobody knows that this cannot be a cross experience, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying from the scriptural examples that we have, the cross wasn't a private thing. It was a public suffering. 28, for which of you intending to build a tower sitteth not down first and counteth the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it? It's a good idea. Lest happily after he hath laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all that behold it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king going to make war against another king sitteth not down first and consulteth whether he be able with 10,000 to meet him that cometh against him with 20,000. We're supposed to count the cost. Are you going to be able to lay your life down? Are you going to be able to hate your own life? Are you going to be able to love your life less than you love God? And we're going to explore in a minute what that can mean. Verse 32, or else... While the other is yet a great way off, he sendeth an ambassage, 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 ambassage. Praise God. <laughs> look, look it up. It's Luke 14, 32. And desireth conditions for peace. So likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. We're supposed to hate our own life. We're supposed to hate the people that are closest to us, the relationships that we have. In other words, we're supposed to love them less than God, love them less than the call of God, love them less than what the call is demanding from us. Don't put people before God. Don't put relationships before God. If you got a boyfriend or a girlfriend and she is starting to make her way into the number one spot of your life, then you're not hating your own life. You're not hating your girlfriend. You're not hating your wife. Now, is this saying that 
go and be mean? Is this telling you to go and, and act nasty to people? Absolutely not. That's not what this is saying. This is saying not to love people more than you love God in such a way that you're going to do things that violate the word of God in an attempt to please people. We're not supposed to be out here people pleasing if it violates God. If your boss tells you to go and punch so-and-so in the throat, then you're not supposed to love your job more than the other person to whom your boss is asking you to afflict or of whom your boss is asking to afflict. That's not what we're supposed to do as Christians. We're supposed to love Jesus more. We're supposed to love the word of God more. We're supposed to love the truth more. Now that's going to open up a whole nother door to a whole nother room. We're supposed to love the truth. Jesus is the truth and the way and the life. If you love your family more than you love the truth, then you're not hating them. Well, actually, in a, in a sense, you are because you're not giving them the truth. You're not, you're not loving the truth more. But you know what I'm talking about. We supposed to, we're supposed to love the truth more. And if you're not living in truth concerning your family, if you're allowing idolatry, if you're allowing murder, if you're allowing fornication, then you're not loving the truth. We're supposed to love the truth. Parents, if you allow your kids to do things or to get you to do things that violate the truth, you're not loving the truth. We got to love the truth more than everything else. We have to love God more than everything else. We have to hate our own life. We have to lay down our own life, our own desires, our own wants. When we became a disciple, all of a sudden, it's not about what you want anymore. It's not about what I desire anymore. God is asking us to lay down our own desires so that we can fulfill his will. And there's going to come a time in our life where we're going to be tested. Christ was tested at the garden when he was literally asked to lay down his life. I know, that's tough. Look at this example that we have from Peter. This is what Jesus told Peter. In John chapter 21, verse 18. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, when thou wast young, thou girdest thyself and walkest whither thou wouldest. <laughs> but when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hands and another shall gird thee and carry thee whither thou wouldest not. Talking about hating your own life, loving Jesus so much that you're willing to put down your own ideas, your own agendas. Paul also gives us an example here. This is what was said about Paul. This was his prophecy in the beginning. This was his word from God. Jesus pulled up on him and he didn't say, oh, you're going to be a great man of God. You're going to do this and this and this, and I'm going to be with you. And there's going to be miracles and yada, yada, yada. Ah, wow. That's not what happened. Listen to this. Acts chapter nine, verse 16. For I will shew him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. When Jesus called Paul, he told him, listen, I'm calling you. I'm sending you to the Gentiles. You're going to suffer. What a prophetic word that would be. What if God, when you first get saved, prophesied that you're going to be, you're going to suffer for my name's sake. You're going to be in a great deal of agony with what I'm going to do in you and through you. How many of you would be thrilled? Do you know that Paul heard that word, he received that, and he pursued Christ anyways, that is an example of hating your own life. Knowing that there are going to be trials and tribulations, what are you going to do? What are you going to choose? Are you going to choose to love this life? Or are you going to choose 
to lay your life down. With a decision and a responsibility like that, we need the Holy Ghost. Brothers, sisters, may the Lord bless you and keep you. And may the grace of God continue to be with you in helping you to lay down your life. We'll see you in the next video.